Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure you like and subscribe and definitely make sure you ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is in the description or at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's see what my wife has come up with me for today. Drum roll, please. All right, cool. Okay, astronomy question. <laughs> Well, at least at least I'm going to say it's an astronomy question. The question of the day is, how are heavy elements made? So, um, yeah. So, in a star, <laughs> but in a very special circumstances in a star. So, uh, if you don't know, the universe after the Big Bang, woo, if we could travel back in time 13.7 billion years, uh, there was a whole lot of energy out there. Everything was like super, super hot. And then over hundreds of thousands of years, it cooled down, it cooled down, it cooled down. And um, eventually it got cool enough that like protons and electrons actually connected together and made mostly hydrogen, but some helium as well. And um, at that point was when we actually, the cosmic microwave background radiation, I'll throw a picture of that up there. Um, but that picture that we have is actually from 300-ish thousand years after the Big Bang. Uh, because before that, it, everything was opaque. Light could not travel because everything was effectively a plasma. It was all charged. But as soon as electrons and protons actually got together, then and they created mostly hydrogen again, like I said, and some helium and a little bit of lithium. Uh, once they got together and established atoms that were no longer charged, then light could pass through. And the light that passed through over time has uh, red shifted and cooled off and everything else. And so basically it's in the, I think it's 2.7 Kelvin. It's, it's very, very close to absolute zero. It's quite cold, but it's not absolute zero. So anyway, we can detect it. A fascinating other story if you want to ask about that question sometime. How was the cosmic microwave background accidentally <laughs> discovered? And what does it have to do with pigeon poop? That is an interesting question. I will save that for another day. So ask that one in the comments or something at some point. Um, anyway, so yeah. So there we have our light elements, right? We have some hydrogen. We have some helium. We have some lithium. That's number one, two, and three on the uh, uh, periodic table. Um but there's a lot more <laughs> elements on the periodic table. Well, it turns out that as stars formed, <clears throat> so gravity, things, you know, pull together the dust cloud, and the inside of a star gets super, super compressed from all the gravity and heats up and heats up and heats up, and then atomic fusion happens. Uh, that's primarily, again, uh, hydrogen fusing into helium. So you get your single protons and they go and if, if, every once in a great while two of them stick together and they release some energy and it becomes a helium atom and then electrons have to go find them too because again it's in a plasma probably it's in a very weird state in the center of the sun. But anyway that's how those lower elements are created. Um, after a period of time as the sun is starting to get really old uh, you don't want to be around at this point because it's not probably good for life, but eventually it kind of runs out of hydrogen and then it goes, oh crap. So it, it kind of collapses or it actually, sorry, it expands a bit and then the center collapses back down again as it cools off. And then <clears throat> the, uh, the next stage, which is fusing two uh, helium atoms together to make, um, gosh, is that carbon? <laughs> I hope so. I think that's right. Anyway, you fuse heavier and heavier elements together. And each time those clumps of protons come together and stick, there is energy that goes boom and shoots off. Um, so far, we're still in the really, really light elements though. Uh, and so each kind of one of those things that happens in the star happens on a faster and half faster time scale, right? So in one sense, it could be billions of years, and then it maybe is millions of years, and then it's thousands of years, and then it's tens of years. Um, the problem comes about when you get to iron. And there's a reason why there is a lot of iron on our planet, and there is a lot of iron in the universe. Um, and after that, after that atomic number, which I believe is 18, things get sparse real fast. There's not a lot of gold or silver or uranium or whatever out there. Um, the reason why is because that happens to be the lowest energy state atom. So every time you fuse together the other atoms, the lighter ones to make heavier ones until you get to iron, you actually are releasing energy. And so there's energy to power the sun and so forth. When you get to iron, every time you fuse atoms together, then the energy starts to go up. And so it can no longer do it. And this is when stars die. Like a small star just 
<laughs> just kind of collapses and it goes like, uh, and you've got nothing else. When you get a larger star, it will go Nova, which basically means it's kind of like, um, like a shock wave, right? So this, the center part finally collapses of the star and then the outside goes boom, boom and it bounces off and it creates a Nova. Uh, that's the, the expectation is that our sun in about 4 billion years ish, uh, will become a red giant, will expand as it starts to fuse together the heavier and heavier elements, still light elements like, you know, helium, carbon, oxygen. Um, and that will actually expand to longer, larger than the radius of the Earth. So the Earth will become part of the sun eventually. <laughs> it's not, not going to be good to be around in four billion years. Um, anyway, and then it will go, it'll collapse and bounce off and you'll get a nova. That nova, that moment right there can create some heavier elements. Um, if you have really big stars and they go supernova, it's a much, much, much more violent uh, reaction. And I believe there's a lot of neutrinos involved with this. There's kind of like neutrino surfing. There's this massive wave of neutrinos that come up, but it's the same basic deal. The whole thing collapses and then it bounces. And that motion of collapsing and bouncing at, at that time, all of these heavier elements, even though they take up energy instead of releasing energy, they bind together. So you get all these heavier elements. They're obviously much more rare because, A, you have to have a really big star to do this, and there's not that many really big stars. And B, it actually has to happen very quickly, so there's only a very fractions of a second in which these heavier elements can be made. And therefore, um, it, it actually is you know, something that you're not going to get a lot of these elements out of. So, yeah. Um, and then the latest theory is actually that there is another... Essentially, they looked at supernovas and they're like, well, it kind of works. It makes more or less what we're interested in, but it doesn't make all of the things we're interested in. So how exactly is that happening? Well, the, the recent uh, LIGO, the Gravitational Wave Observatories, when they discovered the merging neutron stars, I think that was, oh gosh, was it 2018 or 2019? <laughs> anyway, recently, they discovered two merging um, neutron stars as opposed to black holes, and they realized that the action of that creates enough energy that it can actually produce the heavy elements in a quantity that... Um, reflects like the amounts that we're actually seeing in the universe, right? So these, these, these elements are very rare compared to everything up to iron. Everything after that is much, much less common, but it's there and it's there at a, a quantity that doesn't make any sense if there wasn't some other mechanisms besides simply supernovae. So anyway, the, uh, the collapsing neutron star is the latest thought or about how that might work. Um, let me go check my answer just to make sure I'm right here. So I'll be back in just a second and we will continue talking about it. Okay. Okay, so first of all, good for me. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Uh, heavy elements are made in the deaths of stars. So there you go, past iron. Um, and actually, I was not right because it was actually August of 2017 when that neutron star merger happened. Goodness, time flies. Um, but anyway, that is, you know, they're, they're saying that, like, the discovery of gold, right? <laughs> How gold is made. Uh, actually, interestingly enough, you know, if you think about alchemists from the Middle Ages, they all, their big shtick was, we'll turn lead into gold, right? We'll make one element into another element. Little did they know that they were actually looking up at the sky at something that was alchemical, the sun was busy fusing hydrogen into helium and other elements into other elements. So that's a rather fascinating aspect of, um, of the fact that, you know, <laughs> that, that basically astronomy is alchemy. That's literally what's going on out there in the bodies of stars is that they are blending elements together. So really, really fascinating stuff. But anyway, yeah. So August of 2017 was when, that uh, uh, first observation of the neutron star collision happened and a bunch of telescopes were trained on that area of the sky and they realized that that sort of collision could explain the gap in how much of these heavy elements was created. It's a fascinating story. I will link at least one or two articles for you to look at. Uh, certainly super cool stuff.
Uh, one super quick correction. Iron is actually atomic number 26, not 18. Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to imagine the periodic table in my head, but I was not remembering all of the different elements and so forth. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so iron is 26. So anyway, after 26, 27 through, I go, oh gosh, is uranium the last one? 98. Whatever the last naturally occurring one is. I guess there are many more that occur naturally. They just decay very rapidly. But, you know, you can look on the bottom of the periodic table with all those crazy Laurentium and... Uh, plutonium and all these other ones that are man-made at this point. But they would also be made in stars, but their radioactive decay is so rapid that you would never actually see them um, post that. But anyway, so, you know, all those other elements are being created in the deaths of stars uh, or in the deaths of dead stars because neutron stars are kind of like dead stars already. And if they collide, then it's like a double death. <laughs> so there you go. Get two chances to make all those nasty little things. Oh, and one other thing that's really interesting is that it is true... Um, the thought, the, the idea was that when these stars collapse and collide with each other, that the gravitational pull is so heavy, oftentimes it makes a black hole because the, the masses of the two of them create a black hole. And so the question is, how do these elements escape, right? They get created, but they're just, they just get sucked inside. But what happens is they're supposedly, they surf on neutrinos. There are so many... I don't even know how to put a number on it, right? 10 to the very large number of neutrinos that are created. And even though they're ultralight and don't really react, they actually push all of those elements away from the uh, collapsing stars. So really, really cool stuff. So that was a great question. Thank you very much. Um, if you have questions yourself, make sure you like and subscribe and then ask the questions in the comments or at knows at gmail.com. My wife goes through and finds the good ones, and she asks them. This was definitely a good one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Until next time, bye-bye.